Hello everyone, my name is Nidhi Sekho and in this video I will be discussing all four sample papers of fine art subjects that is painting, sculpture, graphics and applied art. So there are going to be 32 questions in all and great practice for you for the upcoming exams. So before I begin, subscribe to my channel so that you get notifications for the new videos that come up in future. Let's first look at the general instructions which are common for all four. Maximum time is 60 minutes, maximum marks are 15. And uh, first is question paper has six questions. All questions are compulsory. Question number one, two, three and four are of two marks each. And there is an internal choice in one of the questions. Question number five is three marks with an internal choice. And question number six is four marks. And this is going to be a crucial part because earlier we have done 30 MCQs in one hour. And now we have to do uh, six subjective questions, lengthy questions of 100 words, 150 words and 200 words in one hour. So it is going to be crucial. So I would suggest that please uh, do some time management, divide your time. So one idea can be that you can do first four questions in half an hour and fifth and sixth in 25 minutes so that the last five minutes can be left for your revision. First sample paper is for applied arts in which question number one is whose creation was man, woman and tree and what is the medium of this work? So the answer to this question is man, woman and tree was the creation of artist K. Lakshma God and medium of this work is etching and lithograph on paper. Question number two, mention the names of any two graphic artists and their works. You can write any two out of these four. First is Devi by Jyoti Bhatt. Full name is Jyotinder Manshankar Bhatt and he is fondly called Jyoti Bhai in MSU Baroda by his colleagues and friends. I am telling you this so that you don't get confused by the feminine name. There are only two female artists. One is Amrita Shergill, second is Anupam Sooth. Second option is Man, Woman and Tree by K. Lakshma God. Third is Children by Somnath Hore and fourth is Off Walls by Anupam Sooth. Third question now has internal choice. First is write the title of the artwork done by each of the following contemporary Indian artists included in your course of study. First Jamini Roy, second M.F. Hussain, third Amrita Shergill and fourth Raja Ravi Varma. Or the second choice that you can write is identify the artist and mention the emotions that have been revealed in the sculpture cries unheard. The first uh, question, the answer to first question is Jamini Roy made mother and child, M.F. Hussain made mother Teresa, Amrita Shergil made Haldi Grinders and Raja Ravi Verma made Ram Vanquishing, the pride of the ocean. Answer to second choice is cries unheard is a famous sculpture made by Amanath Segal in 1958 in bronze and it is in the collection of NGME New Delhi. It is a tall life-size sculpture which is a symbolic work in which three figures of a family are standing in deep anguish. Anguish means agony, pain, misery. They have gloomy faces full of agony and distress. All the three elongated figures of man, woman and child have hollow faces and their hands are raised towards the sky in the helpless position. They are all asking for help from the Almighty God because no one is ready to hear their protest in our society. The theme of this sculpture shows the injustice and exploitation done by rich and powerful people. They are exploiting the weaker section of society for a long time. Amanath Segal is known to do such works for individual freedom and human dignity. He has always tried to show the exploitation done to the weaker section of the society in most of his works. Question number four, describe the main features of the Bengal School of Painting. Questions one to four are for two marks each and the expected word limit is 100 words. So you have to go by your writing flow and your writing speed. The first, uh, first point is Bengal artists gave a sense of direction to the first art movement of the country. Now why is it called an art movement? Art movement is something in which a group of artists have a common goal. And in this case, Bengal artists were trying to give, revive Indian art because they did not like what Britishers were trying to make them do. Then they revived traditional values and rich heritage of Indian art by giving the Indians a new cultural consciousness. Then comes wash technique. Bengal school artists adopted a new Japanese watercolor technique which was a mix of European transparent watercolor and Indian tempera. And this wash technique became the identity and hallmark of Bengal school. Bengal painters were inspired by Ajanta and Bagh, Mughal and Rajput and Shilp Shastra. Shilp Shastra is the Indian book on making sculptures. They fused Chinese cloth painting and Japanese woodcut with Indian themes. Their main themes were mythology and religion, epics and classical literature, social and historical events, birds and animals and also landscapes. The colors are soft without shadow and con conventional perspective 
giving a mystic sense of space and atmosphere and kind of diluting the impact of color now because of this whole thing bengal uh, paintings have a very beautiful glow in them and they look a little hazy also the bengal painters introduced the linear delicacy rhythm and grace of ajanta question number 5 has internal choice describe the characteristics of the painting shiva and sati since it's for 3 marks now expected word limit would be 150 to 200 words the first point would be shiva and sati is a beautiful painting by nandal pos it shows a mythological event of lord shiva and his wife sati this is a beautiful dramatic depiction which uses yellow brown violet red colors that is warm colors in various shades and tones the background and foreground have been beautifully mixed and merged into each other giving it a very spiritual and a mystical effect in the center of the picture lord shiva and sati have been depicted prominently in a sad mood shiva looks uh, sits looking at sati's uh, faded face helplessly and stretching both arms to support the body of sati which is lying on his left knee in an unconscious state the lady is wearing necklaces all jewelry and a light red color sari an aura of light yellow color has been shown behind shiva's head his forehead looks bright and his hair is tied in a bun on top he is also wearing a necklace and a snake around his head neck the torso of lord shiva is looking a little bulky foreground of the painting looks like a blurry vision because this whole uh, wash technique effect gives a beautiful haze and glow to the painting the second choice for question number 5 is which anguishes has the painter disclosed in a painting named journey's end the answer would be journey's end was a famous painting made by abindranath tagore in 1913 in watercolors he is from bengal school and the painting lies in national gallery of modern art new delhi the subject matter would be loaded camel in a f- in the foreground is seen about to fall the impression of the desert and the sunset colors merge into each other and they create a very mystical effect in the whole painting the artist has shown the sufferings of the weak tired thirsty and hungry camel with a listless body and half opened eyes as his journey has come to an end the artist depicts the animal's exploitation and tyranny by his owner but still the animal remains faithful to his owner the colors used in the composition are red brown yellow and orange for giving the effect of sunset and technique used is wash the anguishes that the artist has shown here can also be symbolically related to human life in general now the last question or question number 6 for applied art sample paper is give a brief description on the compositional arrangement of rathika since the question is for four marks the expected word limit would be 200 words or a little more than that now since this painting is very beautiful the description should also be beautiful you can write the rathika is one of the beautiful wash paintings of m a r chuktai that is mohammad abdur rahman chuktai it is done in profile and she looks very delicate and graceful her left foot is in a forward direction her head is bent down with a shy charm and the face is resting on one hand her eyes are downcast they are half closed and her eyebrows are also beautifully arched she is delicately holding big lotuses in both her hands her colorful dress of red yellow and blue brings out her femininity and loveliness the whole painting has a beautiful yellow glow of her dupatta which is wrapped around her her braid of black hair fall down her back three strings of necklaces of different lengths with the pendant each are done in beautiful details all the ornaments have been done in detail there is a, a mughal style lamp in the background on the left with a burning flame and we can see rising thin lines which kind of uh, give this whole painting a beautiful light insects are on the ground near the lamp and there is a honey bee on the flower which is also a symbol of love so beautiful emotion of love and romance is uh shown in this painting by the artist the next sample paper is for graphics in which first question is explain the aesthetic qualities application of the medium and technique used by the artist amrita shergil while creating her artwork which is included in your course also appreciate the role of female artists in providing new identity to indian art with special context to this artwork they have also given marking scheme name of the artwork is half mark name a medium and technique is half mark description of aesthetic qualities is also half mark and describing the role of female artist and amrita shergil is also half mark now with, with these uh, sample papers onwards they have also given keywords that you they are expecting in your answer title is haldi grinders it is an oil on canvas and it is a modern period artwork painting shows a rural scene in which normal routine the daily routine or life of women is depicted 
There are two tree trunks, two solid tree trunks in the foreground through which we can see the subject of the painting. There are two women uh, in the middle facing each other and they are grinding haldi. There is a little girl in front of them and there is a silhouette or a shadow of a woman behind them. The treatment of women is semi-abstract because the colors used are very solid and their faces are dark and hollow. Whereas when we look at the leaves, there is a influence of Pahadi miniatures as they are done in beautiful details. Amrita Shergil came from Hungary and she had studied in Paris. When she came to India, she was impressed by seeing Indian art, especially Ajanta and Pahadi miniatures. She was the contemporary of Bengal school and she blended Western art and Indian art in her own style. Coming to the role of female artists, we can uh, write that she was probably the first one to address the issues of gender and tradition in the context of Indian society and she took these subjects. She was uh, affected by the sadness and uh, the status of women in India. And uh, till date, undoubtedly, she is one of the best selling female artists of the country. Now question number two is write a brief note on Bengal school and explain in your words about its coloring technique, light and shade, illumination with special context to the colors used in the painting of Radhika by its art artist, which is a unique and fine example of artistic rendering of colors practiced during this style. The marking scheme says brief note on Bengal school is for one mark and description of the artwork Radhika is also for one mark. Keywords are also given. First is E.B. Hevel, who was a British art historian and also principal of government school Calcutta. He was the one who encouraged Abhinindana Tagore to revive Vajanta and uh, art of miniatures in 19th century so that art of India can be given a new direction. This led to the development and formation of Bengal school in which Nandlal Bose, A.K. Haldar, all the students of Bengal school, they revived Indian art. Then wash technique. This was introduced by Okakura Kakuzo, who was a Japanese scholar who wanted India to combine with uh, all oriental countries, that is China, Japan, etc. So that um, Chinese woodcuts, uh, Japanese, uh, sorry, Chinese cloth paintings and Japanese woodcuts, all these things got imbibed into Indian art and they started making detailed drawings in wash technique and they started depicting Indian themes with uh, the new technique. Then aesthetic qualities of painting Radhika we have already done. So this is how you write the answer. Question number three, the three dimensionality of the sculptures are complemented and supported by the natural surroundings which are which can be appreciated in the sculpture named Santhal family and triumph of labor. Justify this statement in your words by comparing the artistic qualities of both the sculptures. Description of sculpture, Santhal family is for one mark. Description of sculpture, triumph of labor is also for one mark. The first sculpture, Santhal family was made by Ram Kinikar Baj in 1937. The medium was cement mixed with pebbles on a metal armature or you can say cement and concrete. It is uh, kept in Kalabhavan compound in Shantiniket. The second sculpture, Triumph of Labour, is by D.P. Roy Chaudhary. It was installed at Marina Beach, Chennai in 1959. It is made with uh, cement, concrete for base and boulder and bronze for figures. The first sculpture of Santhal family shows people of Santhal tribe migrating towards a new destination in search of work. The figures are one and a half times larger than life. That is, suppose uh, normal height is five feet, the sculpture is seven and a half. This is a group sculpture which comprises of a male and a female. Female is holding a child on the left side of her body with her left arm. Male is carrying another child who is sitting in the front basket. One basket is on the other side of bamboo, hanging from a bamboo pole on his shoulder. A lively dog walks along happily. Maybe it's their pet dog. Everyone is carrying a part of their little belongings on their, in their hands or on their heads. This is a modern sky style of sculpting in which there is a little bit of abstract treatment. Now the second sculpture, Triumph of Labor sculpture has four laborers engaged in a task of moving a block of stone with the help of wooden logs or staffs. These four figures are perfect anatomical studies of men engaged in an extremely difficult task of lifting a huge rock. These laborers are wearing only loin cloth and two of them have covered their heads with a piece of cloth. Each muscle of the body shines in sweat and physical exertion. This sculpture is an example of teamwork of labors. The first sculpture is semi-abstract because the figures are elongated. The second sculpture is completely realistic. Both the sculptures come in the category of public art because they are kept at public places and you don't have to go to a museum to see them. Both the sculptures are a tribute to labor class and celebrating the struggle of normal common man. Because till date, the sculptures were made for either gods or for important people.
Now question number four has internal choice. The first one is write a short note on the origin and development of the Indian national flag in which you have to throw light on the significance of its colors with special context to the symbolic interpretation of tricolors and Ashok Chakra and the significance of its 24 spokes used in our flag. The marking scheme says the evolution and development of flag will be for one mark and significance of tricolors and Ashok Chakra is also for one mark. Expected word limit would be close to 100 words. For the first part, you can write about the three stages. The first flag came in 1906 at Parsi Bagan Square in Kolkata. It had three stripes in it, green, yellow and red. There were eight lotuses on green stripe, Vande Matram on yellow and half moon and sun on red stripe. The second flag came in 1921, which was designed by Pingali Venkaiya, a youth from Andhra Pradesh. He took it to Gandhiji, to uh, which Gandhiji told him to uh, add a white stripe on top and add a spinning wheel to represent the self-sufficiency of the nation. The final flag, which is the present flag of the country, it was finalized on July 22, 1947. It has three stripes, saffron, white and green and Ashok Chakra in the center. Now the significance of the colors, saffron stands for courage and sacrifice, white is for truth, honesty, purity and peace of the nation. It also represents cleanliness and knowledge. Green stands for faith and chivalry. It also represents fertility, life, happiness and prosperity of the nation. Navy blue comes from sky and oceans. Dharm chakra is for change and dynamism and 24 uh, spokes of uh, this chakra are for 24 hours of hard work for uh, the progress of the nation. And if there is a question on the ratio of the flag, it is 2 by 3 that is 2 vertical and 3 horizontal and it is compulsory to keep this ratio. Now the second part of uh, second choice of question number four, how did the Indian artists through their paintings and artworks inspired and evoked the feeling of nationalism within the masses during our freedom struggle? Give your opinion on the revival of Indian art during the time of independence and justify your answer with special context to the use of Indian themes and connecting Indian art with the common people by the artist, master artist Raja Ravi Varma. The expected word limit would be 100 words. And uh, marking scheme is role of Indian artist in freedom struggle is for one mark. Description about paintings and artworks of Raja Ravi Verma is also one mark. Since it's a two mark question, let's not stretch it. The first one is Abhinandarnath Tagore's Bharat Mata, who he made uh, in a saffron colored sari. She is wearing it in a Bengali style. She has four arms. One arm has a white cloth, which is for clothing and self-sufficiency of the nation to spin its own cloth. The second hand has some text which stands for Vedas and for education. The third hand has, has rosary which is that we have to keep our connection with the spirituality of the country. The fourth hand has a paddy in it so that uh, agriculture of the nation is, is also continuously progressing. The, the second image is of a lino cut made by Nandlal Bose which he made after uh, Dandi March. This became the icon for non-violence movement of the country. Then the three uh, panels below are from Haripura Congress, which were uh, told uh, by Gandhiji to Nandal Bose. He made all these panels in the uh, pandals in the Congress sessions of Haripura and at different places. With this, he tried to connect people with the overall uh, uh, movement, the freedom movement of the country. He used all common themes. He used farmers. He used musicians. He used all men and women, the common people in doing their routine work so that people feel connected to the political situation and the overall freedom movement. Then we can tell a bit about Raja Ravi Verma, who used western style of oil painting and combined it with Indian themes. After giving faces to Indian gods and goddesses, he started uh, re making reproduction of these artworks as oleographs and they reached a common man at very low price in the form of calendar images. Then we can tell a bit about Ram vanquishing the pride of the ocean and a few lines on that. Question number 5 again has internal choice. The first part is a collapsed camel is shown in red background of tusk. The artist tried to capture the portrait and narration with the help of symbolic aesthetics on one hand and literary allusions on the other. The physical features of the camel rendered appropriately in fine lines and delicate tones and its sensory texture leads us to the meaning of the painting. These lines are directly from NCRT. The first part says, identify the painting and the name of the artist. In your view, how far is the artist successful in creating empathy through the use of color tones in this artwork? And third, third says, explain in brief as to why do you like this particular artwork? This question is for three marks and expected word limit would be around 150 words. 
Now name of the painting and artist is one mark. Justification of color tones and emotions is also one mark. Qualities and reason of liking the artwork is also one mark. Name of the painting is Journey's End. Artist is Sabaninda Nartegor. And technique is Wash and Tempera. We have already done this painting in the previous sample paper. So answer can be easily written. The second choice is the sacred place and divinity of female womb. Carrying human figure is shown by the printmaker. The kundalini and the nervous system is depicted in a flow with red dot on the forehead which adds to the grace of this print. Identify the printmaker and the name of the graphic print. What is the significance of the red dot made in this print? Identify few aesthetic qualities that you admire in this graphic print. Now marking scheme goes like this. Name of the printmaker and graphic print is one mark. Compositional arrangement and significance of colors is also one mark. Description of aesthetic qualities of the artwork is also one mark. And word limit is approximately 150 words. Name of the artwork is Devi. Artist is Jyoti Bhatt. And medium is etching. The composition is a combination of two rectangles which are rounded at corners. The upper rectangle has a bold face in its center. And the lower one has two circles with one human figure each. The figures are curled within the dimensions of the circles just like a child in the womb. On the face, the wide open eyes are like that of a Durga idol. There is interesting writing on both side, on both the pendants which are on left and right. One has artist's name on it and the other one has pseudo tantric kundalini written on it. The flowers drawn on cheeks and the earrings are part of Bhatt's stylization of the goddess face and also the influence of folk art that his art had. There are small birds and other small motives also in this painting. As per the Tantra philosophy, Kundalini is the part of Mool Chakra and when it rises, it reaches the brain and it, is a, it all leads to spiritual awakening. Now the significance of red dot. Red dot implies love, fertility, strength, auspiciousness and also good fortune. It stands for energy and also controls concentration. Out of the seven chakras in the body, this is the sixth chakra called Ajna. It is also the central point or the base of creation just like third eye. Now the last and sixth question of graphic sample paper is How far is the printmaker successful in visually communicating and expressing their emotions and feelings with the masses through her graphic print? Elucidate and justify your point of view by explaining in detail about graphic print of walls included in your course on the parameters given below. Name of the printmaker and technique based on methods and material used while making this a wonderful print. Compositional arrangement, subject matter, artistic qualities that you admire in this graphic print. Now the marking scheme is name of the printmaker and technique is one mark. Compositional arrangement is also one mark. Subject matter one mark and description of emotions and artistic qualities is also one mark. In your answer you can write name of the printmaker is Anupam Sooth and medium is etching and lithography. In this composition, a poor faceless lady is sitting on a low platform in front of a wall and is wearing an untidy looking sari and is bare feet. In the foreground, two legs of a sleeping man are also visible. The wall at the back has childlike drawings, probably from the childhood memories of the artist. The print has photographic details and it is exposing the harshness of the society and the suffocating walls of prejudice. Anupam Sood always exposed the hidden face of the society in a very straightforward manner. She depicted women's deprivation and exploitation and also explored the nature of her psyche. In this case, the faceless figure of a woman represents her sadness, her pitiable condition and her vulnerability and emptiness in continuous endless time. Moving on, our next sample paper is from painting in which first question is name two famous sculptors and their artwork that reflects the condition of poor people in India at that time. Name of the sculptors would be one mark and name of the artworks will also be one mark. You can write any two of the following. First, Triumph of Labour by D.P. Roy Chaudhary. Second, Santhal Family by Ram Kinikar Baj. And third, Cries Unheard by Amanath Segal. They are all uh, showing the condition of poor people of India at their time. Now question number two, name two graphic prints from your course of study which shows composition based on human figures. Also write about the name of method and material used for making these prints. Name of the prints are one mark and name of method and material used is also one mark. You can write any uh, two out of these four. Children by Somnath Hore is an etching and aquatant. Off walls by Anupam Sood is an etching made from zinc plate and printed on paper. 
Man Woman and Tree by Lakshma Gaud is an etching on paper and Devi by Jyoti Bhatt is also an etching print on paper. Question number 3 now has internal choice. Who was the father of the folk renaissance in India who travelled to the countryside of Bengal to learn from the folk artisans the expressive power of their lines to create an alternative vision of modern Indian identity in art? Name the artist and his artwork from your course of study. Describe his work on the basis of at least four elements of art. Now name of the artist would be half mark, name of the artwork would also be half mark and description of the artwork is also one mark. Name of the artist who is the father of folk renaissance is Jamini Roy. Name of the artwork is Mother and Child that he made in 1940 which is a gouache on paper and it lies in the collection of NGMA New Delhi. Now description on the basis of elements of art that is point, line, color, form, texture, space. In case of line you can write that lines are very solid, very well defined and it, if you look closely next to the black outline there is also a brown outline which is giving it a little bit of softness and also uh, three dimensionality. Then coming to form, forms are, uh, they are folk uh, influence. So forms are very stylized, eyes are elongated, features are also very well defined. Coming to colors, colors are flat. Uh, you can see it's more of brownish red, uh, yellow ochre for skin and a little bit of use of uh, white and green. Tones are hardly there because the colors are flat. Now coming to space, the subject matter of the painting that is mother and child are the most dominating part. More emphasis is on them and the space around is filled with folk motifs in different designs. Second choice of the third question is Raja Ravi Verma mastered the style of academic realism and used it to depict scenes from popular epics like the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. The paintings on epics became so popular that many of them were copied as oleographs and were sold in market and entered people's home as calendar images. Based on its compositional arrangement, appreciate one such painting from your course of study. Name of the artwork is half mark, description of the artwork is one and a half mark. The painting of Raja Ravi Verma from your course is Ram Vanquishing the Pride of the Ocean which is, which is an oil on canvas uh, which he did in around 1880 and is now in the collection of Jagan Mohan Palace, Mysore, Karnataka. You can make this correction in your books. A lot of oleographs are available in different places but the original painting is in Jagan Mohan Palace, Mysore, Karnataka. The marking scheme says that the answer has to be written on the basis of principles of art. Coming to principles, first emphasis or dominance, the tall figure of Lord Ram is the most dominating part of the composition. His figure is balanced with three smaller figures on the right. All these figures are done in correct proportion because the artist wants to, wanted to uh, keep it as close to reality as possible. There is depth and perspective also in the overall treatment of the colors. Coming to variety, we can see a lot of textures from clouds to lightning to clothes to waves to rocks. All the textures are realistically depicted. There is rhythm in the painting by the use of white. From lightning to clothes to waves, this rhythm, this white color is helping our eye move in the composition. Therefore, we can say that this painting is a complete harmonious composition. Question number four we have already done, so I'll just read it out. It says, describe our na Indian national flag. First, significance of its colors with special context to its symbolic interpretation. And second, the Ashok Chakra and the significance of 24 spokes used in our flag. Description and significance of colors is one mark and Ashok Chakra and its meaning is also one mark. Question number five now has internal choice and we have already done this so it will be easy. In this painting three women are portrayed in the center of the picture plane with yellow, white and red saris placed within the background of trees and nature. A dark black and brown portrayal of a woman behind a tree seems to be in a resting mood which also catches the eyes of the viewers. First, identify the name of the artist. Second, name the painting and the common spice depicted in it. And third, does the massive power of rural women reflect in the subject matter of the painting? Explain logically with your artistic point of view. Name of the painting, Haldi Grinders is half mark. Name of the artist, Amrita Shergil is also half mark. Name of the spice is Haldi and subject matter is for two marks. Keywords are also given and we have already discussed this painting, so I'll move on. Second choice for question number 5, the painting shows a faceless figure with soft flowing drapes of the blue bordered white sari that is adorned by a female figure. She is carrying a sick person protectively on her lap. The figure of this female acquires a certain monumentality and the stature of the universal mother 
while the figure of a man is vulnerable and lies in her lap first identify the painting and the name of the artist what emotions have been revealed in this painting by the artist according to your understanding who can be the central figure in the painting appreciate in short a few aesthetic qualities that you admire in this artwork marking scheme name of the painting and artist is one mark name of the emotions revealed is half mark central figure's name is half mark and identification of aesthetic qualities is one mark the expected word limit of this answer would be close to 150 words or more than that the answer to the first part is name of the painting is mother teresa name of the artist is mf hussain it is an oil on canvas this was actually a series of paintings that mf hussain made in 1980s and some of these paintings are lying in ngm in new delhi now answer to the second part emotions revealed in this painting are compassion empathy care equality for all castes and colors and courage to be so selfless in life now the aesthetic qualities the painting shows three faceless figures wearing blue bordered sarees the saree symbolizes the uniform of nuns of the orphanages and homes run by mother teresa in calcutta the artist has randomly divided his canvas with two yellow lines there is a sick man on her lap and she is leaning protectively over his body the palm that shows in the painting is similar to abhay mudra that is a fear not gesture to assure the needy to have faith in the healing power of god the faceless entity is to establish that she is a universal mother for whom caste color religion is not important there is an orphan girl on the right and on the left there is a naked infant orphan this painting has the elements of european renaissance and cubism hussein was also called picasso of india and this painting is generally compared with uh, peter by michelangelo in which mary is holding dead christ in her lap question number 6 we have already done so i'll just read the main points write an essay on bengal school of art based on the following parameters first origin and development second artistic features third use of indian themes to promote indian revivalism in art and fourth name of uh, name your favorite artist and describe his artwork so all these four are divided into one one mark each first we talk about role of eb hevel and abhinandan nath tagore in revive, reviving indian art then we can also talk about influence of ajanta and miniatures then indian society of oriental arts oriented influence came with okakura kakuzo who encouraged pan asianism then wash technique that was the combination of indian tempera and japanese wash then use of indian themes which helped in connecting subject matter with masses because they took indian themes that is mythology and religion then out of all these four paintings whichever is your favorite you can describe now the fourth sample paper is from sculpture in which first question we have already done so i'll just read it explain in detail about our present indian national flag elaborating on its design size tricolors and its symbolic representation also throw light on the importance of ashok chakra and its 24 spokes used in our flag question number 2 is also repeat so i'll just read it write a brief note on the famous sculpture cries unheard and explain in your words about the name of its sculptor medium and technique emotions depicted also identify the message that the sculptor wants to convey or communicate through the sculpture name of the sculptor amarnath sagal is half mark medium and technique that is bronze and copper and melting of metal is half mark and identification and explanation of the message and emotion is also one mark in emotions main keywords can be pain suffering poverty hunger crying for help suppressed thin figures and the whole condition of this poor family question number 3 identify and write your views on the graphic print included in your course of study made by the well known printmaker anupam sood which reflects and represents the social evils and problems faced by women in the society this we have already discussed name of the graphic print is one mark description of the print of walls is also one mark question number 4 now has internal choice artist from bengal school in their paintings reflected the emotions of pain agony suffering helplessness and sorrow which is represented in a very artistic manner through their use of new coloring technique identify and describe the painting name of the artist method and technique and the compositional arrangement of the artwork included in your course from bengal school name of the painting and artist is one mark and description about its about its composition method and material used is also one mark so out of these two paintings that is journeys and by abhinandan nath tagore and shiva and sati by nandal post you can describe any one now the second choice the famous sculptor 
पी वी जानकी राम गेव अ न्यू डायरेक्शन टू द क्रिएटिव वर्ल्ड ऑफ स्कल्पचर्स बाय हिज मास्टरी टू यूज डिफरेंट मटीरियल्स टू क्रिएट स्कल्पचर्स ऑफ टू डायमेंशनल एंड थ्री डायमेंशनल शेप्स थ्रू लाइट ऑन द नेम ऑफ द स्कल्पचर मेड बाय हिम मीडियम एंड टेक्निक यूज एंड आर्टिस्टिक क्वालिटीज ऑफ द स्कल्पचर फ्रॉम योर कोर्स नेम ऑफ द स्कल्पचर एंड मीडियम इज वन मार्क डिस्क्रिप्शन अबाउट इट्स टेक्निक एंड आर्टिस्टिक क्वालिटीज इज ऑल्सो वन मार्क नेम ऑफ द स्कल्पचर इज गणेशा मीडियम एंड टेक्निक लॉट ऑफ मेटल्स आर यूज ऑक्सीडाइज टिन ब्रॉन्स मेटल रॉड्स शीट्स टेक्निक्स आर वेल्डिंग विच वी ऑल ऑफ अस नो देन एप्लीके इन विच पैचेज एंड स्मॉल पीसेज ऑफ मेटल आर यूज एंड रिपोसे इन विच मेटल शीट इज हैमर्ड एंड प्रेस्ड फ्रॉम द बैक सो दैट देर इज थ्री डायमेंशनैलिटी एंड राउंडनेस फ्रॉम द फ्रंट Ganesha with six arms is in a dancing position. His body is balanced on his left foot bent at the knee. The right leg is also bent resting close to the ankle of the left one. So legs are forming a kind of triangle. He is holding a uh, and playing a veena with two hands in front. Other hands are holding a lotus bud, a conch, a wheel and a mace. The features are made in geometrical shapes with the help of wire. The trunk is a broad and flat plane. There are few patches of red and orange at places. This sculpture has combined all the elements of tradition with the modern abstract style and we also see a little bit of southern influence in the whole treatment. Question number 5 with internal choice. This sculpture is a representation of the tribal family who is forced to migrate from their native place due to lack of financial resources and basic necessity. They are carrying only essential belongings with them along with their pet. The sculpture is rough in texture and reflects on the difficulties of their life. Identify the sculpture and its sculpture. In your view, how far is the artist successful in creating empathy through the use of human forms in this artwork? Explain in brief as to why do you like this particular sculpture. Now, name of the sculpture: Santhal family, and its sculptor Ram Kinnikar Bajaj is one mark. Justification of human forms and emotions is one mark. Qualities and reason of liking the work is also one mark. so this can be done since we have already discussed it let's move on question number 5 second choice the sacred representation of the divine power and the extreme of anger is depicted in this artwork the forceful strong waves of the sea create an environment of cyclonic winds lightning which is also portrayed well with the flowing clothes of the human forms identify the artist and name of the painting identify the main character and the main emotion depicted through this figure identify few aesthetic qualities that you admire in this painting name of the artist and artwork ram vanquishing the pride of the ocean and raja ravi verma are one mark description of the main figure lord ram and the emotion painted is anger which is also one mark then description of aesthetic qualities in the artwork is also one mark which we have already discussed now the last question question number 6 what artistic understanding can you derive by the sculpture made by dp roy choudhury from your course appreciate and write a detailed essay on the following parameters name of the sculpture medium and technique compositional arrangement subject matter and message represented by the sculptor all the four parts of the question are for one mark each so we have discussed it so here we reach the end of the sample papers so make sure to mold your answers according to the questions make points when it comes to title name of the artist medium and technique collection and time period write paragraphs wherever necessary so that the answer looks welcoming to the exam i hope this video is helpful thank you very much best wishes to you and goodbye